Modern problems require modern solutions. Today on the Skid Factory, we're doing something different. Something. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. Last episode we got the old L20A and 5-speed out, cleared a bit of space in the engine bay and winched up the VK56 and dropped it in there just to see what it looked like in the bay. Problems became apparent with steering and sumps and that sort of thing. So we've had a day to mull it over and we've got a path forward. We talked to Nelson from Hartley's Engine and Motorsport who built the engine and he has another solution for us to fix our sump and steering issues. So today we're gonna rip this old sump off, or the original um, Titan sump, and we're going to sling the engine in without a sump on it and the gearbox bolted onto it and sort of reassess it. And probably gonna go for a front sump, which we're gonna have to make. So we'll rip it off first, Pop the gearbox on, swing it back in and see what it looks like. Oh look, Nelson uses eight balls as well. Sweet. We mentioned sump or oil pan issues uh, in our video that we did about project planning. It's always probably the first thing you're going to come up against if your engine physically fits in your car is whether the sump's suitable. And in this case, we probably could make this work, but um, we've been given a, a, a better option, so we're going to take that. Uh, you can see this is a rear sump. It's also off a truck, so it has a very long, uh, deep, uh, well in it, which is not suitable for a car as well. So um, what we're going to do is um, Nelson's got both dry sumps, like com completely dry sump setups, and also a um, like a front wet sump billet plate that he's made that we can then weld to. So he's going to send one of them over from New Zealand. Um, this is a pretty modern engine, so you've got things like oil passages running through the, the oil pan. Um, it's very common in sort of anything past 2000 for, for this to be, they, they have a cast aluminium sump. That's a, it's a structural member of the, of the engine block. It, it strengthens, strengthens the block. So um, of note is that these contact pads here where they seal up against, that's the oil pickup. It's got a cool little o-ring thing there uh, that's out of the pump that's back into the block so the oil filter is on the front here it's been modified by Nelson to to take a just uh, a and lines to go through an oil cooler but these aren't these two are the same height but this one's not so uh, it's probably it's not the simplest thing to uh, make a sump replacement for so yeah he's designed something uh, in CAD and it's been uh, cut from a billet of aluminium to suit and then we can then just add our front structure on it. It'd probably be similar to the original L20 engine with the wings on it um, just for clearance purposes. We're going to clean this up. We're going to tape it up so it's um, free of dirt and schmutz and then we're going to bolt the gearbox on and, and refit it to the car and see what is up. This is Cass Ellen. 
Actually, Arcas, Recycled Cardboard Aided Sump. That's a very good acronym. Mm. Nothing like a bunch of letters joined together for no particular reason. Shout out to federal governments. We're currently using chains to lift the engine, which are secured to the outside of the heads. This was proving to be slightly difficult as they were clashing with the valve covers which we didn't want to damage. Instead, we're using some 10mm plate steel which is cut to size and an old tow hook from ALF Patrol is recycled. This is bolted between the two heads and provides a safe and also balanced point to lift from. The refitting of the engine and box has gone pretty well. It, it, it fits pretty nice still. Um, obviously, it still needs a lot more work. The steering box is continuing to be an issue just with the banks of the, of the cylinder heads. It basically just contacts the steering box. It's quite high in the engine bay, which is a little bit unusual, I suppose. I suppose it was never meant to have a giant V8 in it. But um, So we're probably going to go ahead and remove the steering box and linkage system and um, pick up some KE70 parts. The chassis rail widths are very similar, a few, like 10 mil out or something, so we should be able to get around that, no worries. The tunnel's reasonably well sized, but with TR6060s and T56s, they're a bit of a, a cube, so the steering, the, the gear linkage mechanism always wants to be inside the car. That's just how they are. It's on top of the box and it's pretty bulky. So we'll probably pull all the console and everything out and just open up the hole and allow the box to come up inside the car just to get the um, driveline angle more correct. Um, that can just be covered up then with a, um, like a fabricated plate that we'll probably get Matt to do because he's a gun at making t sheet metal stuff. So it'll come out again. Uh, we'll remove the steering box and linkage and all that stuff. Um, probably get rid of this because that's going anyway. Uh, it's not going to have a brake booster because, for one, it doesn't work, and for secondly, there's no vacuum from this engine. Uh, clean up a bunch of other stuff and go and pick up some KE70 parts and see what we can meld together. I'll get back to you, Barry. All right, we're into the K swap. Not the K Honda engine, obviously but the KE70 steering rack. We went down and saw Jack, who wrecks KE70s, had a pile of them in his backyard and brutally removed this cross member with the help of a bobcat. It's had a bit of drift damage, obviously. It's a pretty standard for a KE70, but the steering rack and the cross member and everything's okay. We've got a spare control arm. It's got a bit of a ding in it. So um, we'll renew all this with fresh, fresh steering parts, and um, we think it's going to work. So obviously I've already done probably half a day's work just measuring and that sort of thing. Before I removed all this stuff out of the car, I made, made pen mark measurements of where the steering lines were, where everything was mounted, anything that's relevant to, to this once we put that in there. So the main sort of thing that we needed to do was get this steering line in the same sort of position as what this was. So the big deal with, the, with a steering rack versus a steering box is it's not as simple as it seems. These things here, these steering arms, there's some science in this. That shape is super specific to each application. And that's the reason why I chose to just get the entire front end out of the, the KE70 because that way we're keeping all the science that goes with this rack movement and this steering arm movement. The critical measurements that I'm looking for here are the distance between these two ball joints, which is within a couple of mil of each other, so it's nothing, nothing to worry about. And the second distance I'm concerned with is the height of this control arm pivot in relation to the chassis rail. So you can see I've cut these out. They're a weird shape because it's slightly wider than this. So the, the point where that flattens out 
uh, it occurs a bit later, so it's actually sort of on the up ramp. I've cleaned off all these engine mounts. I used to have a big stand up here somewhere, cut them off, it was pretty straightforward. Ripped off all the mucky rack stuff, fitted it up into the car, made measurements, figured out this point here and this steering path against my measurements on the car and then made up these um, spaces to go between. That's all tacked up now, it, it's in the car. Now we can move on to sort of checking other alignment things. I'm not going to weld any of it until we're sure that it's going to work, um, but that's going to be a long way down the track. So it's just going to be tacked at the moment. We'll go put the engine in, because that the reason why we're doing all this is so the engine fits better. So we'll put this in, stick the engine in, make sure it's actually appropriate, and then move on from there. As mentioned previously, the TR6060 transmission is a bit of a nugget and will require some slight trimming of the tunnel for it to fit. The centre console is removed so it's out of harm's way. I heard you like wiring. I heard you like stereo wiring. I don't like stereo, it's all stereo wiring. As if you wouldn't especially, cut that. Especially when it looks like that. Is this a Gavin job? What do you think? The brake booster and steering column are also being removed to create more space within the engine bay. Okay. You've got to watch that um, indicator stalk right at the end here. Mr. Cam, you're out of the big house, mate. Hey, yeah, just just got back in from uh, downtown Porto Escondido. <laughs> Couple of waves after a long stint in jail, so. <laughs> Can we use that on YouTube, Alan, or not? Yeah. <laughs> how's, uh, how's the Nova going, mate? Mate, it's going good. Yep. Does skids. Yep. Hasn't broken yet. Look, so. Got that summer that swamp. Staying in, uh, staying in one piece. Swamp. Still to get air conditioning. Oh, yeah. Don't need that in Queensland anyway. When are we doing aircon now? Bloody cold in Queensland compared to Mecca. Yeah, or. that's true. That's true. That's why I come back and it's like cool breaks, winter holiday. And um, how's your receptionist going? Ah, uh, LS Juanita. Yeah. She's good. Yeah, yeah, she's good. She's been spending a bit too much time with Bedford Parts guy though. Like, uh, there's some okay. weird stuff going on there. So <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening. But I didn't actually think it was his style. This guy's good on camera, isn't he? <laughs> Seamless. <laughs> you forgot to cut the hole in the floor. That's what the whole point of this was. You forgot to cut the hole on the floor. And you get... Finish the gerb. Here goes nothing. We're going to be using an aftermarket Malex shifter, so the standard remote shifter mounts are snapped off as they were hitting the floor. The height is okay as far as the rack goes. Well, the sump will have to be virtually flat at that point, but that column's going to be an issue though, that back right of the head there, so that's going to have to come up more than it is now. Yeah, well the only way we can do that is to get the... Or you have a uni just on the firewall and another uni further down. Yeah. Oh, there's like a bolt or something on top of the gearbox behind the bell housing. It's a shifter detent. There's a spring and ball and spring thing in there. Can we do like a Hoff inspection hole? A hole saw out the top of the tunnel for that? Because that's what's hiding this back. It's 
industry standard, isn't it? <laughs> Seems like we've got the engine sort of down far enough or it's, it's as close to the uh, cross member as it can get, so that's okay. We just want to try and get the gearbox up a bit higher just to get the driveline angle closer to three degrees-ish. Uh, so we're going to pull the, the engine box back out again and have a look at... We've just sort of made a witness mark in underneath the tunnel there and just have a look and see what we can do. We might be able to just give it a little love tap and it might be good. And the rack and everything's looking all right? Yeah, the rack's okay. It seems like it'll work fine. Um, just obviously that we've got to make the sump to go around it, but that's uh, that's no drama. Should be good. Yeah, out more. Yep. Don't tell anybody. What time was Gav coming around? Hopefully after this. About. It's the perfect crime. Nobody will ever know. That just rubbed all that paint off. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty much a cheapy Alan. I know, right? How easy is it to cut up wood? Mint. If you've got a door, you've got a gearbox cross member. <laughs> you can just screw the console directly to that. I need a spacer for that. This spacer you get is a alternator tension. <laughs> follow me for more tips and tricks. <laughs> Where do I follow you? Turbo Yoda something or other. Surely if you can build a house with that, it will hold the gearbox up. I'm not sure if it's the kind of pine that you use to build houses. More the kind that you use to stop your car rolling down the hill when you've got a Land Cruiser and the handbrake doesn't work. Here's where we're at at the moment. We've got the engine sitting in there where we would ideally want it. Like height-wise, it's as low as we can possibly get it without banging into the steering rack. Even then we've only got probably maybe 15 mil between the rack mounts, which are a little bit higher than the cross member, and the, the pan rail. Uh, the gearbox, once we cut out some bits there and trimmed a few bits off the side, it's, fit, it's fitting nicely. It's actually, the engine's on a good angle. Um, our problems, putting it where we want it, where it's the right place, it also creates other problems like with steering. Uh, the steering exit out of the, out of the uh, firewall sitting as it is now wouldn't work but we can always modify that um, but for the moment we're we're not going to rush into any mounts at the moment because we need to get the pan rail and the front section from Nelson he's going to um, send it over from New Zealand ASAP because we don't really want to be welding mounts and stuff in when we don't know exactly what size all that gear is so that's coming. Once we get it, we'll bolt at least bolt on the, the pan rail and the parts because our clearance issues are only really where the pan rail itself is. So as long as a miss is as good as a mile type thing. Um, otherwise, everything looks looking pretty good. Uh, we might even have bonnet clearance until we put air filters on it. So where do we go from here now? Do we just screw um, those? I'll probably do a bit more staring um, and thinking, like a lot more. Screw those chunks of wood to the cross sender like that? <laughs> um, we, we may pull the engine forward a bit, which will help with our steering clearance. The, the position we have it in now is basically to get the shifter straight through the original hole because in the console, you, you don't really have a lot of choices where it can go because there's the switch gear for a lot of the stuff in the car is actually in front of the gear stick. So um, the shifter that we're using from Malex, they've actually updated it with an extra position. So at the moment, it's got two positions available. They've made another, uh, like a redesigned model that, that puts the shifter, the, the, the stick further back down the gearbox, which will allow us to pull the, the engine forward a bit. We've got that much room in front of the engine, so there's no dramas moving it forward a little bit, and that might 
give us a little bit more space for the steering shaft as well. So um, I've got onto the boys at Malex. They're going to send one up from Sydney. Um, we'll chuck that on, readjust, and uh, readjust. Go from there. Keep looking. Keep scratching. We'll get there. It's going to fit. That's all we got time for this episode. We were hoping to get the engine and transmission properly mounted, but there was a lot of stuff to do that got in the way and we didn't quite get there. So you'll have to tune in next week. We'll have it properly mounted. And also I think Penelope to Mark's gonna drop by, bring his blowtorch and make way for some big wheels and flares. So tune in next week. We'll chop up a very expensive Japanese icon. Thanks for watching. See you then. Perfect. If you like pina coladas, Getting caught in the rain. How's the next one go? If you like making love at midnight. I don't think that is the next one. That's just the only one <laughs> anyone can remember. <laughs> it's a masterfully written ballad about having sex on vacation. Yacht Rock. And then what do you do with the curtains? No comment. You call Luxaflex to replace them. <laughs> Gurney them. Just reinstating the list, are we, mate? Yeah, man. Mate, you've got to be the change that you want to see in the world. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Ever since Big Mars couldn't write his own name properly, there's, there's been issues. <laughs> Yeah, we still we still don't need Lee here, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you've got to be the change, Woody, and you should change that hair too, bro. Cause... You reckon? That's, that's... What's wrong in my hair? <laughs> <sighs> the best. That's pretty good. Nice outfit, Alan. Mm -hmm. Looking snazzy. Ready to go. You can buy it. You can buy that. Mm. Hey, thanks, Jack. No You're a legend, mate. Cheers for everything. K70parts.jack.com <laughs> Ooh, that Pajero, though. Those 33s. They 31s, but he keeps them clean. You want that one? You want to stand? Either or. Top one to stand. Oh, that's a fancy one. How's that G? Oh, dang. Is that Italian? <laughs> <laughs>